Today I'm going to talk to you all about my latest finished object, the Friend to Friend Shrug by Leslie Friend that I knitted not once, not twice, but three times. <laughs> Hello there, my name is Lisa, and this is the Girl Meets Yarn. In this channel, I talk a lot about knitting, but I also dip my toes in a little bit of sewing, cooking, home improvement, thrifting, among other stuff. So I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to my channel, and let's get to today's episode. <laughs> if you have followed me for a long time, you know I am obsessed with Leslie Friend. Leslie Friend is a podcaster here on YouTube. Her podcast is called A Friend to Knit With and she's also a blogger plus she is a knitwear designer. What I love more about Leslie is her style among other stuff. She's a lovely lady to be honest um, but her style is goals for me. She knows what's up, what works for her. Her style is consistent. Her silhouettes and the things that she kind of like tend to knit are very classic and um, she does a wild card here and there but she keeps some things very like classic and muted. I think she's like the all-American classic chick girl and uh, she wears everything with such a style like I mean like I want to be her like right now. <laughs> you know like the one with the graffiti i want to be here okay like she will not cut that with this although this made me happy i mean like hello there we go um the other day i was watching her podcast and she had like a test call for a pattern that she was kind of like drafting and finishing and it was a shrug um i was so kind of like curious because i love a good shrug when Leslie described this pattern, she used three keywords that kind of like make me pay attention. She used the word soft, quick, and affordable. And um, if you have not followed me for a long time, I am not an accessory knitter. I don't tend to knit shawls or shrugs or socks or hats, none of that. But um, a long time ago, I knitted a shrug by Espastico that I knitted in a speckle, wool, bulky wage, and I'll place the name on the screen as well as on the description box. And um, I didn't like it at the moment, but later on, I was going through chemotherapy and I needed to sit with my port access and you know all my medicine going through my port uh, but at the same time I needed to have my hands and my feet with ice for the entirety of the chemotherapy sometimes like an hour an hour and a half um, and I was quite cold so I used this shrug shrug and I put it on and it was fun because I felt the warmth right on my neck and my shoulders at the same time the nurse could access it and um, I had my hands and my feet uh, completely uh, clear not that I was using them but um, I didn't have to hold on to it or if I move and shift it will not like unravel so when Leslie launched this project uh, I think for the first week it was free so I didn't sign up to my Ravelry. I downloaded the pattern and I left it on my email, you know, folder. And then I went and I bulk deleted a bunch of emails and I deleted the folder. So I had to pay for it. This is a pay pattern. It's, I believe, $4. She does some sales sometimes. Um, it comes in eight sizes and, um, it takes in, in consideration the circumference of your entire torso, including your arms, and it goes up to 70 inches. Um, she adds a schematic to the pattern, and given your gaze swatch, you can adjust and make it wider or longer, and that's what I did on my second and my third. I did a little bit of adjustment to mold it and make it like, you know, for me. <laughs> when she talked about materials, she used one of the keywords that Kind of like jump in front of me and it was affordability i think she went to joanne's and she spotted this yarn it's a lion brand hue and me bulky weight yarn um which is 80 percent acrylic and 20 percent wool the best thing about this yarn is that it's washable and dryable and i tried it and actually made the yarn nicer um it comes in 30 colors and for my size 
which the first time I needed a size 2, I bought 3 and I had this whole skein that is going back to Joann's. And uh, for the second and the third, I bought two skeins and I added a couple rows. We're going to talk about that later. And I used two full skeins. For the second one, I have this much left. For the third, I have no, nothing left. <laughs> I don't know why. I have no idea. As you know, I don't gay swatch at all, and I use my first one as a wearable muslin. So I use the recommended needles, uh, a US size 11 needles, and I use some Addies. Besides that, you're gonna need some stitch markers and a needle to weave your ends. I did use a tag and um, whatever you want to add to it, if you want to personalize like I did, um, but that's it. Let's take a little break and it's going to be a little bit in the future and um, then we will talk about the process. <laughs> from the future I just finished recording my podcast and I'm gonna go get the materials needed for personalized shrug number three I'm gonna get my purse I have my water here and I will take you guys along getting there was not too many options and I didn't want to get like a tiny one this was nine dollars and on the inside you have those canning baskets so I um, it actually came with two so I'm gonna remove these and I'm gonna keep this um, pot just for anything that is not food related um, so I want to keep my <laughs> I want to keep my pots like food safe so this is gonna be just for any random things that I want to do and I actually sometimes need a pot for this and then I end up getting this synthetic uh, dye for the word synthetic polyester acrylic all that I read the instructions says to wash your item before you use it and I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick wash with both of the shrugs that I have not washed the black and the cream and then I will um, go and do this so now I'm gonna go back to the past I'm gonna talk to you all about the process and then we will be back to the dyeing in the final reveal <laughs> you guys know that and I'm a sucker for a good story and a pattern okay and nobody or very little people do that believe I believe a story kind of like I don't know like sell you the dream of the pattern I don't know it gives you like a connection not just to the design okay but to the designer and not to be this confused with the description okay but it's just like I don't know like that prologue or that kind of like initial chapter that kind of like get you all excited or in my case i mean like hello in any case i'm going to read her description and for that i'm going to have some music to start in one two okay, okay listen 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 a few years ago my friend yudi mentioned that i needed to knit a version of her favorite wardrobe piece wardrobe piece <laughs> A shrug. She and her daughter both love it so much that her daughter took it to with her to attend school in Paris where she wore it almost every day. Her daughter felt it was the piece of resistance. Fast forward to this year when Yudi again sent me a picture of a shrug. That's when I knew that I had to give knitting one a try. The friend to friend shrug is the result. I too feel like it's the piece of resistance to my outfit. I feel the same way. Um, embroider some flowers, your initials, or add a brooch. Truly use your imagination to make it your own. And this is where she <clears throat> talk about the yarn. It's very important. I'm going to make or read this paragraph. I recommend using a yarn that will hold its shape. 
the lion brand acrylic and wool yarn worked beautifully a merino or cashmere will also be lovely however super wash yarn grows so it may not be the best choice and i actually understand So here is uh, shrug number one. This is in the color rust and I bought three skeins for this one. I have one full skein and this is uh, what I have left from the second. Um, I did a size two and I didn't gaze swatch so I didn't do any adjustment. Um, in any way or form i just follow the pattern for a size two and when i put it on this hits right on my apex or my nipples i wanted it to be a little bit longer but um i washed it and dry it and i took the measurements of the stitches and i was right on gauge so for me for the next one i decided to just adjust it and just treated this one and i actually just treated when i started knitting as a wearable muslin kind of like a wearable knit that i you know i didn't it didn't matter it was like right or wrong but definitely uh if you think you will be a little bit off or if you need a little bit length here or there with um go ahead and do a gaze swatch i will advise you to and um yeah i love it so here is shrug number two i use for this one the color werewolf and i bought two skeins and i have like a third of the second skein left I don't know, it's on the floor. <laughs> I'll show you here. Um, I did this time a size 3. I think I needed a little bit more width. Uh, not that the other one was too constrictive, but it was like a tighter hug and I wanted like a soft hug. Um, so I did a size number 3. And then I added one row to the decreases before you start with the neck shaping so i added like an, an inch and a half to the length or like an inch um so it was perfect length now it hits right where the my bra strap um is so it's good and um i have not washed it or dry it because i decided to embroider it and i did use a tapestry wool for it and i'm a little concerned that it's going to like felt and just kind of like get tighter so i may wash it and then lay it flat not put it in the dryer when i finished this up i thought i needed something i went ahead and i did some embroider i did some flowers and i thought i needed to do something simpler like i did which is a running stitch or I needed to do a more, I don't know, like detail embroidery. And I didn't want to do that. So I went ahead and I was just like, I'm just going to go ahead and rip this off. And I did like a lacy stitch. And what I did, I just took a chalk and I did my first line. And then I keep, you know, uh, falling those up. They're a little wonky, but at the same time, it doesn't look wonky at all when you have this on it looks so 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 nice the only thing that i'm going to change is that i did a stretchy bind off on the neck and it just like lays just like that it doesn't lay like up i think i need more structure so i'm gonna go ahead and rip that off and then just do like a regular bind off i just want it to stand um a little bit more up because right now you see you can see the knots and all that when i um because of course i I am a knot maker. <laughs> so this one, it's so pretty. I love it. Everybody who sees it, believe it's just like the most elegant, amazing thing. And um, this one thing, the one way you can embellish your shrug. So that's number three. That, that's number two. <laughs> Let's go to number three. So here is shrug number three. You may have seen me go and get some items to personalize this one up. Um, and I will add that footage after I talk, finish talking about this one. Uh, so you can see the final result. Um, but I did a size three. I used the color desert um, and I got two skeins and I have nothing left. Given the fact that I used the same modification, same size as the second one, I have nothing left. <laughs> I'm a little preoccupied about that but like I said I did a size three I did the same modifications I added one row to each um 
to each de in between it decreases until you reach the heavy decreases for the next shaping i didn't do anything different here i did a regular bind off and you see here now it stands a little bit straighter if to comparison to the other one um i knitted this yesterday and it took me around i'll say roughly like eight hours um i think i was not as fast as i wanted to be because my cord was a little too short and i it was not like I don't know like vibing with me whenever i got here that had m less stitches on my needles i went quite fast and of course you know like it's less <laughs> stitches to knit so i think i just speed it up as well um i'm gonna go ahead and personalize this one um and then i will wash and dry it and um weave all the ends and put all the labels on the last two and show you guys the final pro product so so let's go and personalize this one. Let's 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 do it. <laughs> on the water I didn't measure the water I need three gallons and then I need to do half of this thing so let's do that <laughs> This can go so wrong. I am really, really concerned, but listen. <laughs> I dyed this I washed it and dried it I definitely stretch it it grew I will have to say around like two inches so if I didn't do any of the modifications it would have been perfect this is quite tight and then this is quite stretched out um, actually I am NOT a dyer <laughs> I don't know what I did, but I will tell you something. This is going to be probably the more used or the, the one that I use the most um, because, I mean, it's so freaking pretty and I am freaking obsessed. What I did wrong, I think I just let it hang for too long. Then again, I'm not a dyer, but I mean... Do you love it? I freaking love it. It's so, it's so pretty. I mean. <laughs> That's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find this video entertaining and inspiring. I don't know what I'm going to record for next week. Maybe I do some sewing or maybe I just show you guys my latest ranunculus that I love and I've been using a lot. But um, thank you so much for being here. I love you all and i see you next week. Bye!